Before using your hand-operated blade sharpener, you'll need to carefully inspect the cutter blades that you need to sharpen. To begin the inspection process of the blades, the very first thing that you need to make sure of is that there's no debris on the surface of the blades. If you notice this particular blade here, it looks cloudy. It has a, a film on the blade. And if I take the ruler, I can actually scrape some of this off. So before you begin inspecting the blades, make sure that they're perfectly clean, like these four here. Inspect the blades carefully. You want to look at the recessed area of the blades for small cracks. If you have any small cracks in the blades, you will not be able to sharpen those on the machine. There are two dimensions that need to be checked before sharpening the blades. The first dimension is the total diameter from tip to tip. Take the 6 inch ruler from the tool and gauge kit and measure the distance from tip to tip. What that means is from here to here. We should have 7 centimeters minimum or 2 and 3 quarter inches. The second dimension that needs to be checked is the width of the tip on each blade. If you notice the four samples I have here, this is a brand new blade and the tip is very wide. As the blades are used and sharpened, the tips become smaller, such as this one. The minimum dimension for the tips is an eighth of an inch or three millimeters. When they become that small, they will need to be replaced. Before using the blade sharpener, make a few quick inspections. The first thing is to check the blade handle assembly. You want to make sure that the surface here is clean and free of debris. If not, you can simply wipe it off with a rag. Next is to check the indexing arm assembly, which is here. Make sure that the spring is functioning correctly. Notice when I push down, it springs back up again. Also check the condition of the sandpaper on the sanding cam. If it needs to be adjusted or replaced, I'll explain that later. To begin sharpening a blade, take the blade handle assembly, install the blade you want to sharpen. Notice I'm lining up the pin with the hole in the blade. Next, take a pencil and mark one of the recessed areas. You'll need to use this as a reference while you sharpen the blade. So now I'm going to install the blade like this and make sure that the blade handle assembly is seated and locked in. Right now I'm trying to turn the blade handle assembly. It's locked in tight. Now I'm going to take the handle and rotate the sanding cam three times quickly. One, two, three. Now pull the blade handle assembly up and go to the next recessed area. You repeat this for all six sides. Once you come back to the place on the blade where you made the pencil mark, remove the blade holder assembly and flip the blade over. Take your pencil, place a mark on this side of the blade so that you have a reference again, and we're going to repeat the process. We're going to one, two, three, index. One, two, three, index. And you're going to do that for all six sides of this blade. After you're finished sharpening the second side of the cutter blade, remove the blade holder assembly, carefully remove the blade, and what you're going to use next is the stone file. You're going to have burrs on the six recessed areas, and that's natural from the sharpening process. So you're going to take the stone file and run the stone file along each of the six recessed areas like this. And then turn the blade over and repeat. What you're going to do next is visually inspect the recessed areas. Look for any remaining burrs or any flat spots or parts that aren't sharp. If there's any burrs, you can go back with the stone file and touch that area back up again. If you have any spots that aren't sharp, you'll have to actually resharpen the blade, set the blade back in, 
and repeat the sharpening process until you get a nice sharp edge again. After you've sharpened a number of blades, you'll notice that the sanding strip is becoming worn. You can move the sanding cam to a new position to use up more of the sanding strip. So what I'm going to do is loosen up the set screw here using a 532nd Allen wrench and then using the, the six inch ruler I can move this uh, sanding cam this direction uh, three millimeters or one eighth of an inch so I'm going to use the six inch ruler on this side there we go and then lock the set screw back down this will provide a fresh area on the sanding strip for sharpening blades. When you used up the entire surface of the sanding strip and need to replace it, on this side of the sanding cam are two nuts that you can loosen. This will allow you to pull the sandpaper strip out. And if I rotate the sanding cam around, you'll notice there's a piece of sticky tape here. and then the other side comes out. Take a new sanding strip, but before you install the new sanding strip on the sanding cam, you want to pull off this piece of tape and install a new piece of tape. Here I have the roll of double-sided tape. Pull off a nice size section and place it as best you can in the center of the sanding cam, like this and then pull off the other piece here like that. Now when you install the new sanding strip start on one end, slide the strip under the clamp, tighten the wing nut and bring the sanding cam around and once we get to the double sided tape push down that will hold this sanding strip in place now slide the sanding strip under the remaining clamp and pull it tight before you clamp this down like that. It's a very easy process and then just double check that this sanding strip is stuck to the sanding cam, which it is, and you're ready to go.